Hi, this is Chef Dave. Stay tuned for Eating Right Every Bite because we've got some vegetarian dishes that will raise the bar on vegetarian cooking. Vegetarian entrees don't have to be bland and boring. In fact, whether you just want to add some more flavor or fiber to your meals, or if you're thinking of becoming a vegetarian, you'll love both of these delicious dishes. Green and white meatless lasagna and a primavera with zucchini, tomatoes, and corn. And like every recipe you'll see on Eating Right Every Bite, they're designed for people just like you and me, people who have had weight loss surgery. I'm Chef Dave, and for much of my life, I was a beast. So let's get started with some full flavor, low fat vegetarian dishes. It is an easy thing to just take the meat out of something and maybe replace it with another protein, like ricotta cheese or mozzarella cheese. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. So the first thing we need to do is start our bechamel sauce. And let me tell you, it's easy. And do not let the word bechamel sauce confuse you. I have to say, as a chef, one of the very first things that I was taught in culinary school was the word mise en place. And mise en place is a French term, which means everything in its place. And it is imperative that before you start this recipe, that you lay out all of your ingredients, just like I have, before you start making this dish. So why don't we go over here to the stove and let's get started. Okay. I'm gonna turn my stove onto medium high, not high, because we don't want the butter, I'm sorry, the margarine to burn, and that's what we're using today is margarine. And so I have it on medium high. I'm gonna go ahead and add my margarine. Kinda hear it sizzling in, in the pan already. And these are the diced onions. Right in here. You wanna cook these onions for right at about a minute. You wanna get them to where they're not sweating and clear, but just enough to kind of break down the, the initial rawness of the onion, because you wanna infuse that margarine so that the bechamel sauce actually tastes better. Okay. It's imperative that when you make this dish to not use a lot of fresh herbs and spices because they will actually turn bitter because by the time you get done making the bechamel sauce, then you bake it in the oven, they're gonna turn black and they're not gonna be really good. So in this recipe, I'm calling for a lot of dried spices and herbs. We're gonna add a little bit of nutmeg, which is a traditional ingredient in bechamel sauce. We're gonna add dried parsley, dried basil, and of course, granulated garlic. I'm gonna mix this up for about 20 seconds, get it all nice and mixed in. Next, we're gonna add a little bit of cornstarch. This is gonna help thicken the bechamel sauce. You wanna make sure that you get like a heat, um, a, a, a plastic spatula that can actually take on a little bit more heat than what a, a cheapo one for like 80 cents would do. This one was like six bucks, so this one can take on more heat so it doesn't melt in the pan. We got this all mixed in. And then we're gonna take our two cups of milk and add this right into our pan. I gave it a good mix here with my rubber spatula here. I'm now gonna switch over to my whisk. And I'm just gonna keep whisking this to make sure that it doesn't scorch because dairy products, it's the fat in the milk that will actually start to burn. And if you scorch this dish in the beginning, you cannot use it, you'll have to start all over again. So make sure you keep a watchful eye on the bechamel sauce and just stir it. And I like to say if you stir it like in a figure eight motion, what happens is it'll actually get most of the bottom of the pan. And so just think of a figure eight, like ice skating or something. Okay. Well, this is about ready to bubble. So we'll finish up adding the cheese. Okay, 
the bechamel sauce is now simmering, which is exactly what we want it to do. And now I'm gonna add my spinach, and this is frozen. Um, and you wanna make sure that you, when you defrost it, that you squeeze out all the moisture from the spinach before you put it into the sauce. Or it'll, make, it'll actually make your um, bechamel sauce not thick anymore, it'll actually thin it out again. We're also going to add our black olives, our cheese, and I also have Parmesan cheese, but I'm only gonna add half. We're gonna reserve the other half for the top when it goes in the oven. I'm gonna turn my heat off because I'm done cooking it. What you're gonna have is a really good, thick, ooey gooey, cheesy spinach mixture, bechamel to go with our lasagna. All right, so let's go put this lasagna together. Okay, ricotta cheese mixture. This is important that you remember to do this step. We're gonna add our ricotta cheese to this but we're also gonna add one egg. The egg is what's gonna help keep the cheese from becoming too loose as it bakes. Because ricotta is a cheese and it will actually um, begin to melt because of the heat. And if you don't have the egg for binding, it'll actually just run everywhere. So just one egg. And let me grab some salt here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of pinch of salt onto this, a little bit of fresh ground pepper. gonna mix this in. Exactly it. It also kind of loosens up the ricotta cheese so that you can spread it out over your pasta by adding that extra egg. So it works out both ways for you. Okay, so now let me get some space here to put this here. And I also have my baking sheet pan here. I'm making a little bit of a bigger one because I want to make sure that um, it's great, you know, so you can see it. But in the recipe, it calls for a little bit of a smaller pan. I'm going to spray this with some cooking spray. That way, when I go to take it out of the oven, it doesn't stick. And we really don't want to be messing with some stickiness here. A good tip. I like to use these already ready to use oven baked noodles. I don't have to even have to boil them. If you choose to use the other noodles, you have to follow the package directions. But these are just oven ready. Um, noodles. We're going to put these in the bottom of our pan. And then we're going to layer them. It's a little hot here. Let me grab a pan. And I'm just going to take a couple of scoops on this one. And you also want to take your ricotta cheese, kind of dab it on the top here. More ricotta cheese. The other half, I should say. Take my little pasta shell things here, squeeze it on there really good. Divide it evenly on top. This is gonna go in the oven at 450 degrees for just at 45 minutes. It smells delicious. Let's spread this over the top again. You wanna make sure that if you use the oven baked noodles, that you get, get them totally wiped over because um, it'll take the moisture from this mixture to help finish cooking the pasta in the oven. Okay. And of course our Parmesan cheese, the other half, right on top. And you wanna be generous because remember, we are gonna be eating vegetarian and this is even some more protein. And now that needs to cook for 45 minutes. It's exactly what it was supposed to look like. It's awesome. Mmm, looks really good. All right, let's see here. Should come right out of the pan. Wow. Look at the layers. You got the ricotta, the spinach. It's really awesome. I just love the way that this tastes and the way that it looks. It goes really, really well with just about any type of salad that you can think of, like a Caesar salad or a side salad. It makes a complete vegetarian meal. Of course, always you can always add some fresh herbs to this. It's really, really good. This is gonna be great. Well, I'm Chef Dave, and we'll be right back with a quick kitchen tip and a delicious recipe for some Primo Primavera. Be right back.